Well, you've heard the adage that it takes a child, or takes a village, I'm sorry, to raise a child. It also takes an ecosystem to raise a successful entrepreneur. So Patrick asked Bud and I to talk a little bit about some of the ecosystem resources that support entrepreneurship in our community. Um, I'm here to talk about the Whitewater University Technology Park and the Innovation Center. We are proud sponsors of today's event and consider ourselves partners of USASB. Through a partnership between the City of Whitewater, the Whitewater Community Development Authority, and the University, we strive to foster an entrepreneurial ecosystem that attracts and nurtures new residents, entrepreneurs, startup companies, existing small businesses, as well as our students, faculty, staff, and alumni. The cornerstone of our park is our Innovation Center, which is a business incubator that offers space, facilities, expertise, and services to our entrepreneurs and small businesses. The Whitewater Incubation Program, or WIP, is our service that is offered at the Innovation Center, and we provide coaching, mentoring, support, and other resources to our startup companies. And that includes the iHub, which helps faculty, staff, led companies launch in the region, the Launchpad and IWIP, which are focused on student business incubation development, as well as educational opportunities like Elements for Success, where we bring in experts on areas of interest relevant to business to share their knowledge and expertise and help our companies grow. These initiatives highlight our ongoing commitment to enhancing the regional economic ecosystem and the important role that the University of Wisconsin Whitewater plays within that ecosystem. The Whitewater University Technology Park, the Innovation Center, the University, and our incubation program are proud to practice entrepreneurship excellence and to be partners in supporting regional businesses and entrepreneurs. Just in case you're not clear, that's Denise and I'm Bud. <laughs> And it's my distinct honor uh, to introduce our next speaker. Uh, prior to that, I just want to say thank you, Patrick, for organizing an event like this. Uh, he brings a great deal of energy to this campus and certainly to USASB, and we are better for that. Scott Gittrich, founder and CEO of Topper's Pizza, launched his restaurant franchise career in 1984. You know, he started out uh, working with a large corporate entity, Domino's, in a number of different uh, positions, but Scott quickly grew through the ranks and learned a great deal from that early start. Uh, Topper's Pizza has experienced explosive growth in the last three years. The up-and-coming chain currently operates 58 restaurants in 10 states and expects to cross the 100 store threshold in early 2016. Pretty exciting stuff. The nation's restaurant news recently named Topper's Pizza as one of the 50 breakout chains of the year in Entrepreneurship Magazine. And they've been ranked in the top 500 franchises in the US. It's pretty exciting to have something like that based here in Whitewater, uh, Whitewater being the world headquarters for Topper's Pizza. Today, Whitewater, Wisconsin-based pizza delivery concept is known for pushing the pizza envelope by engaging the fanatical fan base with mouth-watering pizzas, topper sticks, innovative, bold food creations, and an edgy and playful brand attitude. As Steve Kaplan said, be the brand and make it fun. Wake up, brush your teeth, get in line, stay in line, take a meeting, grab a sandwich, pay bills, get some sleep. Wake up, scrub those teeth, back in line, wait in line, more meetings, uh, a ham sandwich, more bills, Go to sleep. Wait. Scrub. Wait. Stand. Meet. Pay. Collapse. Wake up! Escape the same old thing. Blow up the expected. Get out there and seize the day. Chart your own path. Build your own monument. Lead. Conquer. Win! If you have a passion, you can do all of these things on your own terms with toppers. Passion lets you do what you love every single day. It frees you from a numbing routine that eventually turns into years of average. 
Passion helps you rise above the dream killers who are just fine with the status quo. It gets you noticed and helps you make your mark. You know what else passion does? It makes money. And if you have a passion for pizza, well, you're in luck. Because we're taking off. Our destination? A planet called the next big thing. At Toppers, we're launching a full-fledged assault on ordinary. Our weapons? House pizzas, bold flavor combinations, and world-famous topper sticks. We're breaking free from the expected and creating our own recipe for success. One pizza at a time. We crank the music. We run orders to the door. Literally, run. And we make food that dreams are made of. Chocolate bacon sticks, anyone? We don't give a damn about the boring chains. Guys in suits thinking up new ways to cook frozen dough and concepting recipes from a boardroom. Our pizza heroes are in the kitchen, staying up until 3 a.m. to give the toppers fanatics what they want. And if you like what you're hearing, we want you to own a piece of it. If there's one thing I've learned over my long career as a pizza guy, it's that you don't make your mark by sticking to someone else's plan. In fact, pursuing a different path to success is the only way to truly build something special and make a few bucks while you're at it. At Toppers, we're disrupting the industry with food, attitude, and people that represent a true passion for one thing, pizza. If you're ready to escape the ordinary, this is your first class ticket to creating the most awesome adventure of your life. Build something that you can be proud of. We're doing it every day, and now is the time to join us as we take over the pizza industry and have a damn good time while we're at it. Are you ready to put your passion to work? Join Toppers and leave ordinary behind forever. Thanks. Thanks. Um, because we're over two hours into this, I think we should start by everybody get up. I think I'm working against uh, lethargy here. Stand up for a second. Just, uh, here's, what, here's what I'd like you to do. I uh, Just turn to the person next to you and say, uh, stretch out a little bit here. But turn to the person next to you and say, uh, I'm going to listen to this guy and he might have something for me. Say something like that. <laughs> Okay, go ahead, go ahead and, uh, and grab a seat. So it's, uh, it, it truly is my honor to be here and talk to you all. Um, I'm going to pretend that there's a bunch of people that are on the other side of the camera, some uh, budding 20-year-olds uh, that are uh, listening to my message also. Um, the way these things work is I was asked to be a speaker in January or so, and then I was shortly thereafter asked if I could provide a bio, a picture, a blurb, some of which Bud just, uh, just read parts of. And so we did that. We provided that uh, bio. And we were contacted back shortly thereafter. Um, the organizers of the event had a little concern with my bio. Uh, it said something like, uh, Get Rich dropped out of college in 1984 to pursue a career delivering pizza or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it said, but <laughs> understandably, there was a little bit of a concern. Here we are in fine learning institution, um, some uh, impressionable young students here in the audience wouldn't want to be, wouldn't want to sway those folks into thinking that it would be smart to drop out. Um, I guess the cat's out of the bag. We did make the tweak to the, uh, to the bio, so that d no longer exists in the bio. Um, but it is part of my story that I, left, uh, that I left college in 1984 to pursue a career in the pizza business. But it got me thinking about, uh, about the talk that I would give today and how really my growing up in the pizza business is a lot of, it, it is education. It's lessons that I've learned. It's things that I've learned both from a form formally and informally. And so those are the things that you might get uh, today from, from, uh, from my story or ways that, ways that you might learn uh, also and, and that it might help you. So uh, in any case, all I have is my story. If I say something that sounds really smart, I guarantee I'm, uh, I'm repeating something that someone else said. But I'm going to, I'm going to tell my story. Um, and I'm going to do it without any notes because they don't have the note taker view. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to be winging it here. Uh, so my intention is to give you something that you.
hopefully can use. The second thing is, I'm hoping that I'm gonna sell a franchise today. I think that somebody in this room uh, has the wherewithal to put this thing together, has the right personality, and would make a good franchisee. Um, a lot of our toppers franchisees have a connection to, to Whitewater or have a connection to UW-Whitewater. We have five or six franchisees that actually are graduates of UW-Whitewater. And I am one of those people. I am a psychology grad from UW-Whitewater, and I own quite a few Topper's Pizza stores. Thanks. Psychology is like my own take on, on, uh, on the business school, right? Um, okay, we're not in the right place. Okay, so uh, let me tell you just a pinch about Topper's Pizza. We have 58 stores. I actually thought it was 57, but maybe that was updated. We just opened one on Wednesday in De Pere. Uh, we're going to do about $52 million in system-wide sales this year. We've opened about half of our stores in the last uh, two and a half years or so, and we expect to open Store 100 in early 2016. Um, I've, got, uh, I've got somebody that I work with. Uh, actually, he just walked in the room here a little bit ago, Scott Iverson. A uh, couple of years ago, we were getting cooking, uh, getting some momentum, and he said something to me like, man, I think we're going to look back in five years or so, and we're going to say, this really happened fast. And uh, I don't know if this is what I actually said to him at the time, but I certainly thought, well, it might seem really fast to you, um, but uh, I've been doing this for uh, quite a long time. I, uh, I have been in the restaurant business since I was 15. I'm 50 years old, so I'm 35 years in the restaurant business. Uh, I've been in the pizza business for 30 years, and Topper's Pizza uh, has been around since 1991 uh, when my wife and I started it. Uh, our founding vision when we started Topper's was uh, to create a fabulous product from scratch with an, that's uh, an un unusual products that you would find on a pizza menu. And uh, I think that our founding vision has largely kept, kept to that, that, that the food is the champion, as well as uh, that's, that, uh, that great service that's, uh, that's part of, part of uh, any good restaurant person. So uh, I started at Domino's Pizza in 1984. Um, in 1984, in the pizza business, uh, places didn't deliver. Uh, people would come into a Domino's Pizza store and we would, they'd look around like, um, where's the restaurant, you know? And we'd say, well, it's a delivery place. You can call and we'll bring it to you, or uh, you can order right now and carry one out. Or and people were like, wow, weird, you know? And we were saying, it's like Chinese. And that's probably hard, uh, hard to believe. Uh, now there are 64,000 pizza restaurants in the United States, and I suspect most of them uh, deliver. Uh, the pizza business has certainly changed a lot over the course of, of my career. Uh, things that I, a lot of times people ask me uh, entrepreneurial type questions, how, you know, what, what's your advice on blah, 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 and, and I often tell people, work for somebody that does that. <laughs> work, work for somebody. Uh, you know, that, that's just what I did. There's a lot of ways to crack the nut, uh, but again, I. I'm going to have to tell my story, and my story is I work for somebody else. I work for a highly regarded uh, franchisee in a really good restaurant system. I learned uh, really important things that are part of me today. I learned how to, how to uh, manage people, how to be the kind of person that other people would want to, uh, to be around. Um, I learned some basics about uh, running restaurants, how to keep a store clean, how to teach people how to keep a store clean, how to make great product, how to how to be super friendly, how to pick friendly people to work with, uh, most, of whom, most of whom make minimum wage. Um, and uh, I learned how to make money in a, in a restaurant, which is, it's a, pennies, it's a pennies business. We're not doing $10 million deals. We're doing, gonna do $52 million this year, and we're gonna do it about 19 or 20 bucks at a time. <laughs> and our intention is to make like $1.50 or so on each one of those, or two bucks on each one of those orders. Uh, and so it requires that we get a lot of people that call us back every single week, and they could fire us at a moment's notice. Um, but I learned that business uh, working for someone else. Um, during the time that I worked for Domino's Pizza, my wife and I all, all the while intended to open our own uh, pizza place. And uh, so I was a, a driver and I uh, dropped out of college to become a, a, a management person and I managed a couple of stores 
had quite a bit of success. I was a district manager, and when I left Domino's Pizza, I was the director of operations for a 22-store franchise in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, so uh, when we opened up uh, the first Topper store, that was signage then. We painted the side of buildings. Um, at one time, there was a painted sign side of a building in Whitewater. We opened up in Champaign, Illinois. That's where the first Topper's Pizza store uh, was. And uh, we opened up to big success. Uh, we kind of had an a, uh, opening promotion that was, uh, we sold a smaller pizza than was available in the market, and we sold pizza really, really cheap right out of the gates. Uh, kind of turned the, the Champagne market on its head a little bit. We got a lot of our competitors immediately changed sizes and pricing structures and this kind of thing. And uh, we opened on August 9. By November, uh, I had $25,000 in the bank. And I have to say, I felt pretty good. Um, I, th I felt like I'd uh, got, gotten my return on investment. I mean, I'd started with $30,000. Here it was in November, and I had $25,000 in the bank. Uh, Christmas that year, we were on the campus at the University of Illinois, and of course, the students mostly went home for a Christmas break, and I was to learn uh, a really important lesson about cash flow. <laughs> uh, that, that Christmas week, we were closed Christmas Day and Christmas Eve, and that week we did 700 bucks. So worldwide sales at Topper's Pizza <laughs> was uh, $700. We do about a million dollars a week now. And a $700, and it's not inflation, it's not like 700 was a lot of money then. Um, it was bad. So I went from November thinking I'd made it to, you know, the end of December calling my landlord and vendors and saying, uh, hey, could you give me a couple more weeks to make that payment? Um, and I got to say, that's the way champagne was for me for the next, uh, for the next couple of years. It was, uh, I, was in a I was in a dog fight. Uh, at the worst in Champagne, we were selling two small cheese pizzas for $2.99. Two pizzas. <laughs> um, it, was, uh, it was tough. In the summer of 1992, I lived on credit cards, you know, every credit card that anybody would give me, and then we were, we were living on that. Uh, I had to sell 20% of Topper's Pizza that first summer for $15,000 to basically to survive, and it was the first of two times that I sold a chunk of Topper's Pizza for, uh, for not much, and bought it back both times. I own 100% of Topper's. Um, but it was, uh, it was tough in, uh, in the pizza business in Champaign. We call it the Red Ocean now. The Red Ocean, I don't know if you've heard this, this analogy, but the Red Ocean is the ocean where competitors finally come in and they're just fighting on, on price alone. They've commoditized their products and they're just bloody in the water with each other. And we were solidly in the red ocean. Uh, in, uh, in 1993, early 1993, I got a phone call from a buddy of mine, uh, a Domino's franchisee in Iowa. He called me up and he told me that uh, he had the perfect location for the second Topper's Pizza store. Um, and I said, well, I don't have two nickels to rub together. I'll be, I'll be lucky to survive where I'm at. Um, I'm not thinking about a second location. And he said, well, hang with me here. Uh, there was a Domino's franchisee in southern Wisconsin that had 11 stores that uh, he closed. He went out of business. And my friend had gone over to Whitewater, where that store had been one of the good stores of the 11-store franchise. And he had signed the lease at this building and had bought the equipment, and then he had applied to Domino's Pizza for the franchise, to which they'd said no. So he was calling to tell me about my perfect second location, and uh, he said, come on up to Whitewater and check this thing out. If you like it, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make you a deal that, that, uh, that you can't refuse. So uh, bottom line is, uh, I opened this, that, that store in, uh, in Whitewater, Wisconsin, the store that you see right here. And uh, you know what? I don't tell people exactly the story that I told you very often. Usually I tell people that, that the, they say, where did Topper start? And I'll say, the oldest store is in Whitewater, Wisconsin. I, I, don't, I don't go through the whole, there is a store in Champaign, Illinois story, because you know what? 
we are from Whitewater, Wisconsin. <laughs> we got a chance to start over when we opened in Whitewater and the Tavros Pizza that, that hopefully you know and love today got its start in March of 1993. Uh, back to the founding vision. Great food. I'm telling you, when you're selling two small pizzas for $2.99, you're not putting too much food on that pizza. You don't have too many people scheduled to deliver. You're not delivering pizza too fast. We were, uh, we were a pretty far cry from what I had intended for Topper's Pizza and Champagne. Another thing that started in, uh, in March of 1993 in, in Whitewater was we the, our opening menu had a new product on it. We'd experimented with a bunch of breadsticks along the way, uh, but that day that we opened, we started selling something called uh, Topper Sticks, and we put cheese, lots of cheese on it, and uh, we sold a triple order of Topper Sticks for $2.99 in March of 1993. And dang it, the governor of Wisconsin gave it, gave it some love this morning. That's cool. <laughs> it's our signature product. It's it's by far the thing that when I meet people, and I've met people all, all really around the world uh, that, uh, that have known Topper's Pizza, I met, I met somebody in Honduras who said, uh, oh my gosh, I love your Topper Sticks. Um, I met four Americans, and I was glad to meet that guy because he made me feel a little bit at home in Honduras. Uh, so we got our start uh, really doing things right in, in uh, Whitewater. In 1997, there was a guy that was delivering pizzas for me, Andy Johnson, uh, and he was going to school here at UW-Whitewater. He was in a couple of my psychology classes too. He also graduated with a psychology degree, but uh, he was a uh, 1997, he's graduating that May, and he wants to open up a Topper's Pizza store in Eau Claire, Wisconsin with this young lady who uh, turned out to be his wife later. Um, so, we wrote up like the most illegal two-page franchise agreement you could ever see. Uh, he uh, bought a bunch of equipment on contract from me. I helped him paint, the, paint, paint up the store, and we had our second store in a franchise location at that in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. I opened a store in Stevens Point that year and also sold another franchise to a uh, Domino's buddy of mine down in North Carolina. And uh, Andy and Carol Johnson have four stores up in that part of the, of the state. And uh, my friend in North Carolina still has a couple of stores and does, and does well there. But we were kind of off to the races with a franchise program of sorts. Um, the, uh, in 2000, 2004, uh, Scott I had, uh, started as a director of marketing at Topper's Pizza. And uh, one of the first things he wanted to do was he wanted to hire an ad agency. So uh, he'd set up a couple of interviews and he and I went to Madison to talk to a, a group, a guy named Kurt Hankey and an agency named Shine. And it was an important day for, important day for me and for Topper's, but let me get a drink of water and I'll tell you about it. <laughs> So uh, we sat down in Shine's office and they'd done, their, uh, they'd done their homework. They'd done some research about toppers and new toppers. They were in Madison after all and we'd had a store there for a while. At this point we had uh, 10, 12 stores. Kurt said, uh, so who is your target market? Who would you say is your target market? And I said, I knew the answer to this. I said, all right, we've got basically two target markets. We've got column 18 to 24 or 30 year olds. Some of them are college students just out of college. In any case, they burn the candle at both ends. They don't turn their oven on. Um, you know, they eat out a lot. They're rowdy. They're out late at night. Um, you know, it's that group. Then there's this other target that we have, which is 30 to 50 year olds, call them. People with young families, uh, you know, Kurt's like, all right, so basically everybody is your target. Is that what you're saying? I said, all right, now come on, Scott. Who, who does your brand really resonate with? Who do you really, when you're trying to sell pizza, who in your mind do you have as, as your customer? You know, who, who do your people think is your target market? You know, and he just was digging a hole and laying sticks across it and saying, oh, come on now, come on. And I said, all right, all right. It's those 18 to 24 year olds, I'll admit it. Um, and he said, you know, I know why you don't want to admit that it's 18 to 24 year olds, because that sounds like a niche. That sounds like it's some small slice of the world. 
And in fact, that's true, of course. And the stores that we had, hey, we do great without students. That's a fact. If, if the University of Wisconsin students weren't here in Whitewater, we'd be fine. This would be a great store with just the good residents of, of uh, Whitewater that aren't going to, to school here. Uh, you know, and he went on to explain to me, and this was a great day for me to learn, uh, that we had accidentally gotten this fanatical following uh, from 18 to 24 year olds and that companies kill to get this kind of following. Companies work their tails off and spend millions of dollars to try to make their brand resonate with 20 year olds. At the time he used the example of Apple. Apple at that time was running that ad where there was the, the Apple guy and the, and the uh, PC guy. And, uh, if you remember it, the, the Apple guy, you know, he's just calm and he was cool. He was a good looking guy. And then here's the PC guy, uh, pocket protector, nerdy looking guy. And, uh, you know, you watch those commercials and no matter what age you were, I mean, at that point I was 40 and I sure did not think of myself as that nerdy PC guy. I for sure thought of myself as that Mac guy. You know, the bottom line is 20 looks good from a lot of different places. 20, 20, years look, 20 years old looks good from 12 years old. It looks good from 50 years old for sure and 60 years old. Uh, and so I received the message. Um, not only did I receive the message, uh, Scott and I left and we went out into the parking lot and got in the car. And I had this like physical shivery reaction. Um, to what had just happened. That was really the day where I became supremely confident that Topper's Pizza works all across the United States and that we will have at least 3,000 Topper's Pizza stores in the United States. Um, because I realized that we had a very distinctive thing, a distinctive brand that we could own. Um, up until that point in my career, and I even have said it since then, but it, up to that point, the, when when we started Toppers, okay, we had an idea for a unique menu, yes. But the truth is, at that point, cocky Scott, I thought I could open up a domino store next to a domino store and I would kick that guy's ass because I would deliver faster, I'd have better people, I'd have a cleaner store. I would shut that domino store next to me down. Just by sheer operations, just by sheer fabulousness of people, I could outperform my competitor. And the way that I would tell franchisees up to that point, and I told people that worked for me, is I said, we've got to be 1% better at everything. We are in a dogfight, and the way we win this thing is we are going to be 1% better. And I talked about it like a toe-to-toe -to -toe prize fight. Uh, and that day at Shine was the day that I realized, holy smokes, it's not just a prize fight. We have something special here, uh, the Toffer's Pizza brand. And from that day, what we've done is we've, we've spent our time and our resources basically growing up, putting our arms around that idea that we know who we are, we have a strong brand, and we know how to teach people about our brand. So from a marketing standpoint, uh, we've really gone uh, from being Pizza Hut, uh, if you will, look-alikes in our stores and in our marketing to being uh, our own selves. The cool thing is we didn't make this up. This was who we are. That's what Kurt taught me was, no, look how cool you are. Look how you guys, look at your fans. He took videos of people in our stores going, woo, you know, I love toppers. He's like, that's who you are. Now look at your advertising. You suck in your advertising. You know, go ahead and be cool. So uh, we changed our prototype, we changed the way that we talk to people. You may, you may see our advertising, we kind of talk smack a little bit with our customers. Um, we've changed from just sheer local marketing, of course, to more regional marketing. And our marketing has also changed from, from print to, uh, to broadcast and now to, now to uh, digital. We, uh, something that's been very important for us over the last uh, several years is uh, going into new markets and how do we teach people in a new market what Topper's Pizza is. In Wisconsin, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. We're gonna be opening a store in a couple weeks in uh, Janesville. And 
you can go over there we have it made in Janesville, to tell you the truth. Um, there's enough people that know toppers in Janesville that we really just have to click the open sign. But in St. Paul, uh, Minnesota, uh, people didn't know the toppers pizza brand, and so we've gotten very good at quickly telling customers, this is who we are. We substitute for the place that you're ordering pizza from every week. You can get what you get from Pizza Hut, but better from these people, and you can feel better about it. And that's really the thing. Uh, for many, many years, uh, I asked people that lived in Madison, yeah, where do you get pizza? And they would say, uh, we had one store at that time, so people would say, ah, Ian's or Glass Nickel or Noble Romans, or they'd, you know, Vinny's down on uh, such and such a street. You know, people always have this, this, their cool pizza place, the place that they like, you know? And, I always joked about it because there was 11 Pizza Huts in Madison, but for like 10 years I couldn't get one single person to ever say, I eat at Pizza Hut, you know? Um, and they were high volume Pizza Huts as a matter of fact, I know. And that's something that is really, really important to us is that in the pizza business, people have a strong sense of themselves playing out and what the answer is to the question, who's your pizza place? I asked a couple of people in this room this earlier today who their pizza place was. Nobody said Pizza Hut or Domino's. And Governor Walker said Toppers, <laughs> which was very cool. Um, so uh, we have to be able to teach people uh, to fire Pizza Hut and try Toppers Pizza out. And then, of course, we have to earn that business uh, one pizza at a time. Something that's uh, very, very important to us right now uh, Ten years ago, uh, people said, you ought to try to sell pizza online, and nobody was really doing it at the time, and I said, why does anybody need to buy a pizza online? You can call an order in like 30 seconds. You know, why would anybody go online and order pizza? Okay, I was wrong. <laughs> people will go on, online and order. We do about 30% of our business on our website, and uh, I'm certain that within a few years, it'll be more than 60% of our sales will be coming from our website. So uh, one of the answers is that customers don't want to order in 30 seconds. They want to take like eight or 10 minutes and lollygag on a website and look around and also spend about 20% more. So we're spending millions of dollars in this, in this area over the next few years to be fabulous. Uh, but uh, as much as I am a little bit of a marketing geek, I'm an operations guy first and foremost. Uh, I'm a, I am I am a pizza guy. That's true. That's truly what I am. I was just uh, I was I was for some f weird reason. Um, and this is you get this kind of story because I don't have my notes in front of me. Uh, yesterday I was driving somewhere and I was thinking about oh you know if if I were to die it would be cool to have instead of a gravestone like this it would be cool to have a pizza guy throwing a pizza dough up in the air and a bunch of kids around him just looking like this and to have it say that was fun. Um, because that's what, that's, what, that's what this feels like to me. Um, Henry said that he liked, uh, he liked his business because it's beer and beer's fun, Some, something like that. I'm paraphrasing, of course, you guys heard the original. Um, I love that about the pizza business. That is pretty cool. We bring, we bring the party and, uh, you, know, I don't, you know, I don't know what business you all are in, but we get called for fun times. And it's really a blast to be, uh, to be that, that, uh, that company. Our operations have, uh, have really gotten uh, fabulous over the next several years. We went from uh, myself and a few people being very good at teaching people how to run restaurants to uh, you know, hiring experts and, uh, who are on staff and, and folks that can have put together unbelievable training systems. And now we're really looking for uh, shaving these little bitty efficiencies. Uh, an example is something that we pride ourselves on is listening to our people, uh, meeting with uh, constantly all of us on our team, meeting with people that are working in the stores because as much as I call myself a pizza guy and I would make my gravestone like that, these people actually are a fair bit smarter today about what's going on in a store uh, than I am. So we spend time talking to these people and we learn things like uh, at the end of the night they're going through and they're taking inventory and they're walking all around the store kind of following the form of this uh, of the inventory form. Well we completely changed our stores so that you can from the walk-in cooler all the shelves 
are lined up so that you just go like this and then, the com and then into the computer. It doesn't sound like much, but it saves about 20 minutes uh, a night. You do the math. You know, 50, 57 stores, 365 days a year. Just that change, which came from a team member, absolutely huge. And there's no end to those kind of things that we've done in our store so that when a franchisee buys a franchise, we say, here's how we do it. Here's why we do it. Don't change it. <laughs> this part works. Um, and we've gotten very good at training uh, franchisees and, and uh, team members as we go from place to place. Here's one of our franchisees. Some of you might recognize me. I used to own a bar here in Whitewater. Uh, Greg Morrison. About 70% of the stores that we open over the next uh, several years will be uh, franchise stores. Um, I, uh, this is the part of the business that I really didn't know when I started Topper's Pizza, and it's really, it's a distinct, it's a distinct business, is uh, selling and supporting franchisees, and I consider franchisees our customers. And uh, it's, uh, it's very, very rewarding to uh, work with these people and to see them send their kids to college on, on the businesses that, they, that they've built with Topper's Pizza logos over the front door. Um, We've gotten very good at vetting uh, franchisees that would be successful in our system. Uh, we look at four different things, their financial capacity to do it, what role they intend to play in the company, is that a fit for us? Uh, their personality, they have to be uh, people that they like and do they have the experience that demonstrates that they would be a good franchisee for the role that they seek with our company. Uh, so we've gotten fairly sophisticated. That's, that's a number one with succeeding with a franchisee is uh, basically entering into what amounts to a marriage with somebody in re a relatively short amount of time. It's harder to get away from uh, a bad franchisee than it is to get away from uh, a bad team member, for example. Um, We've learned about franchising from, it's not hard to study franchising. There's a lot of examples of uh, fabulous franchise companies out there. Uh, we've made friends and contact with uh, a lot of great franchise companies, uh, associations, consultants, uh, reading the trades. Uh, frankly, uh, you know, I, I dropped out of college, but I, I swear I consider myself a student. That's what I do is I study. I study, I study a business, I study the restaurant business, and I study the, the pizza and franchising business. Um, when people ask me what I'd attribute my success to, which comes up from time to time, I like to say these three things. There's a lot of things I could say, but there's some element of smart decisions, certainly. That's what, the study, that's what studying is about and trying to be great and learning from your mistakes is that you're making as best as you can smart decisions. I don't make a, every decision smart, of course. And this mostly has come down now to working with people who make smart decisions and, and are experts in their field. Uh, but smart decisions is only a part of it. I did not go out and hire some consultants to come up with a great pizza concept and then got the financing and then boom, we're off, we're off to the races. There's a lot more to it. If, if it was just smart decisions, I wouldn't stand up here and tell you a lot of how I do it because the cost of competing with me is not very high. You could go find a couple hundred thousand bucks and pop down a pizza store in Madison and give it a go. Uh, but I'm really not afraid of you doing that. <laughs> our, brand is, our brand is strong. Uh, more than likely, you would uh, quit well before you ever got in any uh, traction. Another uh, important part of my success, somebody mentioned it earlier, they said a little bit of this. I think it can take a lot of this as luck. I mean, I'm a, I'm a white male living in the United States in 2014. That alone is luck. I'm like at the top of the evolutionary food chain, baby. Uh, and I've, I've uh, just barely held on a couple times um, where I was at death's door and, uh, and was lucky enough for this or that to get that call about Whitewater, Wisconsin from my friend or whatever. So there's, uh, you know, and, and luck is a fun part of business. You know, you were asked about fear and, uh, you know, I've had, I had somebody ask me about our employee benefits uh, a couple of years ago. It was a reporter, I was doing a, a, an interview. 
And I gave her the stock answer that she wanted, but what I wanted to say was the biggest benefit that people that work at Topper's Pizza or any business get is they don't have to be afraid. <laughs> to them, it's the air they breathe. The paycheck's gonna be there on, on Friday and it's all good. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm the person that doesn't quite have that, but on the other hand, I think I'm well suited to business ownership because uh, I don't really have problem uh, sleeping, it's all good. I didn't have anything when I started, as somebody else said, uh, and I could provide for my family if, if something happened. Now Jim Caldwell doesn't like me talking like that, that's, that's for sure. Uh, and a lot of people are counting on me now, so uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite playing with house money the same way. But it's like poker, you make your best decisions, but then you roll the dice. So luck is certainly a part of it in business. Um, but by far the biggest thing is uh, perseverance. Uh, Steve talked about tenacity, um, just not quit. And the fact is, uh, most anybody in 30 years would get pretty good at something. <laughs> if you don't take no for an answer and you work 60 plus hours a week for 30 years with all your heart and all your mind, there's a really good chance that you're going to get good at it and you're going to have some level of success. So uh, I, uh, I think mostly just not quitting is probably the biggest, the biggest thing that's worked, worked for me. And a couple times I should have quit but just didn't know. Um, so uh, Scott and I were doing a visit uh, at a store a few years ago. and. It was like it often is when you go into a restaurant, a Topper's restaurant. So we go in and I know a couple people, but I'm meeting uh, some people for the first time. We were in Minnesota and there was a young guy, uh, maybe 23 or 24 years old. And I met him and he was excited to meet me. Oh, Mr. Garrett, it's exciting to meet you. Um, I've only worked here for a couple of months, but we're the best place in town. You know, I couldn't be prouder than to work here. And I'm gonna be a franchisee. And, uh, you know, he tells me a story about a delivery where he, a customer loved what we were doing. And, you know, he was giving me the topper's love. He was passionate about what we're doing. And, uh, like I said, it's not that uncommon, but I really was thinking about it, and uh, gosh, this is like another in the car with Scott epiphany, but we went, went and got in the car, and we were driving to the next door, and I said, you know that guy, he works for a franchisee who bought a store from a franchisee who worked for Andy and Caro, Andy worked for Dale, and Dale worked for me. Um, you know, that kid is like my great, 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 great grandson in the pizza business. You know that telephone game where you say something to somebody and then they, and then it's like, what does the last person in the line say? That's what that guy was doing and he had it dead on. I was very, very proud to have him with the Topper's logo on his chest, showing up at, at somebody's door representing me and representing us. Uh, that's thrilling. It's really, really thrilling to meet people that are passionate about our, our brand. And there's a lot of people out there that I don't know uh, and those 1,400 Toppers team members out there that are passionate about what we're doing. And most of them, like I said, making minimum wage. Uh, so we, uh, what we decided to do so that we could get this telephone game down as best as possible, like we talked about having this source of truth. What are the things that we want to repeat to ourselves and to others over and over and over again about who we are uh, so that no matter what else we may lose, we don't lose these. So we got a, a few of the old toppers heads in a room in Wisconsin Dells and, uh, and we talked about that for, it might have been two days, a day or two, and I didn't know what that list would be, but it turned out to be something that was reasonably called values. And uh, we, we, at the beginning of meetings, we talk about our values. When a franchise candidate comes in, I pound the value, what our values are straight away. When, when a new team member starts in our company, um, that's what we, all of our people gather in the back room and they talk about our, our core values. These are the things that we wouldn't change just because the market changed. Um, there's a lot we would change. Uh, if pizza delivery fell out of favor, Hopefully we could figure that out in time. Um, 
But we would be willing to change that. That's not one of our values. These are things that will, I'll go down with these things. The first one is live with integrity. Um, you know, on the panel, uh, she asked about people working for you and why people would work for you. And um, the reason anybody would follow anybody is because they're a person worth following. Um, and integrity is first and foremost, what is at the heart of whether people want to be around you or not. Um, I'm gonna screw up, I'm gonna screw up plenty. Uh, but I'm gonna do my best and I'm gonna tell the truth. Uh, I'm, I'm, I consider myself uh, extreme on the side of trying to, trying to do the right thing by people. Sometimes when we talk about integrity, somebody will say, it's as easy as uh, just being true to yourself. And I get what they're saying, but it sounds too easy to me. To me, life is going to throw you some traps. Life is going to try to get you to make ethical mistakes and to be immoral. Um, it's critical that you can trust the people that you're working with and they can trust you. Um, this is the real deal. I'm, it's possible I don't succeed in, in business. It seems highly unlikely. Uh, but I'll have my integrity intact if that happens. That one is not going to leave me. And I, I, I want to only be associated with people in my business that are like that. Have fun. That's our second core value. Might sound like a weird value, but it's, uh, it's a fact. I work hard at this. It's, this is what I've spent my life doing. Um, you know, when... Uh, when I wake up in my bed at, uh, you know, usually between four and five in the morning, my eyes pop open and I start working right then. It's because it's fun. I love it. It's good, it's good stuff. Um, you can choose who to work with by just this one alone, really. Is that person having fun? You know, when I go into a store, I can in about 10 or 15 minutes meeting people, uh, I, I, I get it. I, I understand what's going on in, in this store, what the people are like, and a lot of it comes down to are they having uh, fun? Uh, do they enjoy what they do? Um, and if somebody's not having fun, I'm very happy to uh, promote them to customer or send them over to Pizza Hut. Um, one of my favorite things I ever saw a manager do was say, no, but there's a Pizza Hut down the street to somebody. Um, to go to go apply to and we're in the pizza business. It's a it's a it's a f fun business We bring uh, we bring the party uh, And so I want to work with people who have fun our third core value is build something special So that guy at that store that I told you about There's like there was something about it and it was that he really thought we were doing something bigger than it's a job Yes, this is my job. I come in, I break rocks in the quarry, I get this paycheck, and I live for the weekend. No, this guy believed what I believe. We're doing something cool. And in fact, he's the important part of that. Doesn't really matter how great I think we are or what cool thing we're building. If he doesn't believe it, then we're not that because he's the guy that's doing it. He's the one who's showing up at a customer's door. And I firmly believe this, that the customer gets it, that when uh, you're all aligned, when your people are all aligned, your customer is the recipient of, of that special bond that you have with, with the people. And that bond with our people is that we're building something special. Our fourth co core value is bring it with passion. So, oh, Scott knows what I'm gonna say. You know that expression, I gave it 110%? I hate that expression. Gave it 110%. I actually heard some uh, coach at my daughter's volleyball team said, all I expected from the girls was to give 110%. I'm like, that's all? <laughs> what? Um, okay, you can't give 110%. I'm a math guy, so just on its face, that sounds weird, 110%. Um, but secondly, if you give 100% to your work, then what did you leave for your family? What did you leave for your hobbies? What did you leave for the other things in, in your life? Uh, you know, I've got five kids, and what I'm trying to teach my kids is just show up. If you show up, you are going to outperform most people. Now, if there were a bunch of students in here, what I planned to say was, 
I don't know how many of you are getting straight A's, but I'd be willing to bet not a lot, and what number of you are capable of getting straight A's is probably everybody in here, probably. If not everybody, it's really close. And it works for you. Ask yourself, what are you getting done? What are you capable of, of getting done? And how do you explain that discrepancy? How do you explain the discrepancy between what you can do and what you're capable of doing? Um, it, you know, it's, it's bringing every, everything you have when you're, when you're working. And honest to goodness, uh, that's how, this is a big part of how we succeed. I don't have to be David Novak, the CEO at Yum Foods of Pizza Hut. That's not necessary in our business. Um, what I need to do is I need to have a franchisee or a store manager that has a store next to a Pizza Hut, and that person has to kick that person's ass. That's the way that I see it. And if that person is fully engaged, has a fabulous brand, and brings it with passion, there's a really good chance that person that he's competing with is, has a job <laughs> and is not as engaged and is easy to be. Our fifth core value is give customers what they want. It's the great obsession. Uh, this is probably the thing that I'm thinking about when my eyes pop open in the morning is something to do with the customer. And in fact, the customer is the purpose of everything that we do. Uh, I even believe that what I'm doing here right now is service, service to the customer. I really, I really do. Um, the, uh, there's a lot of people that say bad things about business people. You know, they, they make it sound like business people are out to trick people out of their money or something like that, and that we're trying to take people and make them work like slaves so that we can have blah, blah, blah. Um, and that is just the furthest thing from the truth. There may be business people like that, okay? There's bad everything. Um, how I was taught business and how I run business in my heart is that we serve that we serve the people of the cities that we're in, that we serve the team members that are working in our stores, that we serve our franchisees. If we're successful at that, the money will be there, um, given good, good management, but that it's service, it's serving the people around you. And if we're successful at, at giving customers what they want, then I believe that our success is, is assured. Uh, when I graduated from, uh, from UW-Whitewater in 2000, my uh, advisor at that time was Meg Warzynski, and I told her that I was thinking about taking some more classes. And what did she think about that? And she said, um, sure, take more classes, but uh, what I suggest is that you get in your mind this framework of that you're always going to study. Study. Not just that you're going to pick things up along the way, but that you're going to pursue knowledge, that you're going to work hard and you're going to study as part of what you do. And it was good. That was really good. And I've done that. I've had an continued my intellectual pursuit in a very conscious way uh, to be fabulous. I, uh, I never ran a company that's this size. Um, what I've promised the people that work for me is we're going to have the best people run this company and I will fire me if I'm not the best person. And I think that that I wouldn't, I wouldn't want my people to work for a place where that wasn't the deal, that I had to be relevant. I have to be the best person to run this company. They deserve to have the best person run, running the company. And for me to be the right person to run Topper's Pizza when we're doing $100 million and $200 million, uh, I've got a lot to learn and a lot to be great at and a lot to, a lot to prove to people. Uh, I read a lot. I probably give away about 200 books a year. I took, uh, I made a list of eight or ten books that uh, I think are fabulous uh, business slash life books. If you want that list, you can uh, email I want more at toppers.com and we'll send you that list. Um, I, uh, the last thing I guess that I ever considered myself was uh, a dropout. And of course, I'm, I'm, teasing, I'm teasing somebody in, in the room. Give them, give them a break. It's all, it's all good. Uh, I, uh, I, think that, uh, I think that when you study what you do and you bring, uh, and you bring passion to what you do, your success uh, is assured whether in, uh, in dollars or not, I don't know. 
uh, but life's full of lessons, so don't drop out. Thanks for, thanks for letting me share. Thank you.